Welcome back to our channel where we discuss all the joys and challenges along the road of life and on this journey of homeschooling. Today we're going to dive into a topic that many homeschooling families face, homeschool burnout. We'll chat about why homeschooling can be so hard and I'll provide some practical ideas to help you push through those challenging times. Let's get started. to post this video is because I've noticed that on a lot of the groups that I follow, I've seen a lot of posts about um, discouragement and just feeling like, you know, parents are failing at schooling their kids and they're thinking about sending back, them back to school. And I think we are at the brink of a new homeschooling year and um, we're kind of at the, the point where everyone's preparing to go back to school and so for um, a lot of parents they're kind of weighing the option should I send my kids back to school and it broke my heart just to see so much discouragement on these um, sites and a lot of these parents are posting anonymously and it seems like they feel like they're all alone. I have been going through that and just listening to some podcasts and reading some books and kind of putting things back into perspective, I'm feeling a lot more hopeful about this upcoming school year than previously. Um, my mom ended up putting my younger sisters back in school. She had some health issues. Um, our family was going through a lot at the time and um, she had a lot of burnout too from homeschooling and just did not have the support that she needed through that. Just, you know, ended up not being a great thing. So I wanted to post this video just as hopefully encouragement maybe for someone that's out there that feels that same way they feel discouraged they feel burnt out they feel like they're not doing um doing it right i think there's a lot of hardship and pressure when you're homeschooling your kids and um if you were like me we start homeschooling when covid started and so homeschooling really was the best option at that time for our family and for us and a lot of families felt that way and now we're kind of at the cusp of everything going back to normal and um you know all those stipulations and all those things that were in place when many of us began homeschooling are no longer happening they're no longer an issue and so i think we're kind of at a transition period where a lot of people are like okay everything's normal maybe i should put my kids back into um public school and i don't want to uh come across as if i hate public school and i think it's bad i think it works for some people and it doesn't for others and i at the end of the day think you need to do what's best for your family but if you have that desire like we do and if you truly feel like homeschooling is the best thing for your family it breaks my heart to think that some parents love this life and they love homeschooling their kids but they are just simply discouraged and feel like they're not doing it right and so yeah i, I think we're kind of at the point where a lot of COVID homeschoolers are at a threshold of should I put my kids back in school or should I keep homeschooling? When we began homeschooling through COVID, I uh, started watching a lot of bloggers and um, reading a lot of bloggers and hearing about all the wonderful things in homeschooling. And even though I'm a second generation homeschooler and I have first-hand experience of what it's like to be a homeschool kid. Being a homeschool mom is completely different than being a homeschool kid. Not to mention the homeschooling world in and of itself today is so much different than what it was when I was a kid. And so, I mean, diving back into it, I had glitter and gold in my eyes, if I'm being honest. I just pictured this little house on the prairie type schooling where, you know, it was just wonderful and great all the time. And maybe just was not prepared for some of the realities of homeschooling because it's not Little House on the Prairie and Mary Poppins and great and perfect all the time. As our family transitioned here to Georgia and had the um, life change of a new environment and a new state and a lot of new things. And as our kids have transitioned, um, we've kind of transitioned into homeschooling two kids to three kids to now all four kids. Um, our kids are different ages. Different things work for them now than did before. So it, you know, it everything just changed and everything was different. And I was not prepared to change and adapt our school schedule and our curriculum. 
uh, it just had not crossed my mind that as we trucked along in this journey of homeschooling that we'd have to make some adaptations and changes. Um, I, I am a very strict schedule follower and routine follower, and that's how I feel the happiest. Doesn't necessarily translate well into long-term homeschooling. So I had to take a good deep hard look at what we were doing and make changes as our kids have gotten older, as a certain curriculum has just not worked for the kids um, this year, maybe as it has before. If you were a COVID homeschooler like we were, you kind of went into it with this really positive experience because of what was happening in the world around you. And then um, maybe just unrealistic expectations because at that time, I feel like there were a lot of vloggers and bloggers that were like talking about homeschooling because of the state of the world. And it was always just, you know, if you were looking at their Instagram post, it's just like so perfect and so put together. And homeschooling life is just not that. Sometimes it's so hectic and so hard. It's uh, challenging to have your kids at home with you all the time. A lot of times burnout is inevitable if you don't give yourself permission to take care of yourself. We always wanna take care of everyone else, especially when you're staying at home, you can always find, or at least I can always find things that I need to do. But sometimes the best thing that you can do is just give yourself a minute to recharge and refresh because we can't pour into our children and we can't pour into our families if our tank is empty. Not to say that, that God isn't sufficient to fill in a need when we need a need. There are definitely times and seasons where, you know, you're not going to be able to take a, you know, spa break to go down to the spa or get a massage. Um, you may just be able to take a few minutes, you know, in your bathroom or closet to breathe in the midst of the chaos. Um, and I believe in those seasons, I do believe that, you know, obviously God is sufficient for getting us through that. But I think in general, we do need time to refresh and um, revamp and revitalize ourselves. And if we're constantly running on the hamster wheel, a lot of times that leads to burnout and it leads to um, feeling defeated and stressed. And sometimes we just need to recharge our own battery. Self-care does not have to be something extravagant. It can be something very simple. Um, in our new house, I have a bathtub. In our old house, we had a bathtub that we shared. It was like a bath shower combo that we shared with the kids. And our bathroom was constantly a mess. And it was just not like a bathtub that you'd want to take a bath in just because we shared the bathroom with the kids. And now in our new house, we have our own bathroom and we have a tub that I can take a bath in. And um, I enjoy just sitting in there and taking a bath after the kids are in bed in peace and quiet. A few weeks ago when I was really feeling burnt out and like I cannot go on with this, how do I get the kids in school? I was just really, really discouraged. I decided, you know what? I need to, to take care of myself. I felt like my battery was drained. I've got to, you know, recharge so that I can um, pour myself out to my family. And uh, that evening we had a bad storm here in Georgia. And as I was preparing my bath, the tub had just filled up. I lit candles, I um, had music playing, I had grabbed a book and I thought, I'm just going to relax. Well, the power went out. And so the kids ended up down in our room, <laughs> which was not the quietest. And I almost, I, I was so discouraged because my music of course was off because the power was off. I almost just thought to myself, you know what, forget it. You know, I was trying to have a relaxing evening and now here I am, you know, I can hear the kid, kids giggling like kids in the other room. And I just wanted to have a relaxing evening to sit in the bath and listen to some classical music and read my book and it's all ruined. And I had to just stop myself and think, you know what, this is, was probably the best time for a bath because the power's out and I had candles all around the tub lit so at least I had a little bit of light to read my book and um you know I just went ahead with it because I, I knew I needed that time for myself my husband and my kids all commented how I never do that I never take time to rest I never take time to get in the bath 
and read a book and just relax because usually I find something to do in the evening and I put that on the back burner because I oftentimes do not take time to myself, but we all need that. Self-care isn't always, you know, <clears throat> going off doing something by yourself that is expensive or extravagant, like taking a trip, though those things are wonderful and, and having a massage, I definitely enjoy when we have the time and, and resources for that. Sometimes self-care is just sitting down and reading a book and closing your door and telling the kids to find something to do quietly. Or sometimes self-care is just taking a walk around your neighborhood, uh, we like taking walks around our property. It's so peaceful and quiet out here. Um, and I feel like when I do those things, it just re-energizes me so that then I can pour into my kids, gives me a fresh perspective sometimes on areas that maybe I'm struggling with and that I kind of feel like, <clears throat> I don't know how we're gonna get through this or I don't know what's a good solution. Some of my kids, they're at various levels. They're not at grade level and everything. Some of them are ahead, some of them are, are behind. And <clears throat> particularly the ones that were behind, I was kind of stressing myself out uh, with because I was like, oh my goodness, you know, they don't know where they're what they need to know. They're not where they're supposed to be. And what I had been doing is I had been taking off my mom hat and putting on my teacher hat and like researching all these things, which you should totally do if you're homeschooling, but I was like doing it over, it was overkill, it was too much. Um, really, my kids are fine right where they're at, but I was just so stressed out um, with the thought that like, I ha we have to get caught up, we have to get caught up, we have to get caught up, that I forgot, you know, my first place is their mom. And I don't really have to be a teacher. I think as mothers, we're naturally teachers. Um, teacher is a label that we put on people that work within the education system. I think moms just, we're just naturally teachers. And so, you know, I had to kind of put things back into perspective and realize like, I know my kids and my kids are perfectly fine. You know, they are not so far behind. They can't read, they can't write. Like they, they're perfectly fine. I was stressing myself out for no reason. Um, Sometimes, and I, maybe I'm the only one that's like this, I get so caught up on the academic learning that I forget that when we're home educating, it's also about life skills. It's also about building character. It's also about just building a relationship with your kids. Like those things are just as important as the academic learning. It's the gift that we have as homeschooling parents. And it's okay to say, let's put the schoolwork aside and let's spend today reading, or let's put the schoolwork aside and let's do some crafts. Um, the academic learning will progress, you know, and that isn't the most important thing. And your kids are gleaning what they need to from the schoolwork. I think a lot of times um, over the past year, we've plugged along so much that my kids were kind of just exhausted with what we were going through. And so we needed to just close the book and put down the pencil and give them a mental break. Um, I saw a post, actually a couple posts online about this, about not wanting to ruin your relationship with your child because of homeschooling, because of fighting over lessons and, and all that. And it can be a struggle. And uh, I think spending that time one-on-one -on -one with my kids and really focusing on that relationship has been extremely helpful in um, not always being in teacher mode, like I was talking about earlier, putting on that teacher hat and taking off mom hat, you know, but to really focus on developing a relationship through life and learning with my kids. familiar with the uh, not consumed Bible studies the owner of that company does a homeschool boot camp each year and I attended that homeschool boot camp I think it's still live if I'm not mistaken I'll link it below just so you can check it out and she was talking about how she puts her vision for her homeschool and her goals for her homeschool uh, somewhere where she can see it just to be reminded of the reason she homeschooled and a lot of times daily you know you kind of 
get in your routine and your rut and you don't think about those things. So I decided I was gonna type it up and put it in the front of my binder that has my schedule. So every time I open it, when I'm homeschooling my kids, it will just be a good reminder of, you know, when we're maybe having tears through a lesson or I'm exhausted or, you know, I just don't feel like, um, doing another thing that it will be a good reminder to me of, you know, why we chose this life, why we chose this journey. Another thing to another strategy to help you get through homeschooling burnout is to look for resources. Look for resources to improve. If it's your burnout because of curriculum, maybe toss that curriculum out and try something different. Look for resources to get your kids involved in things. When we moved here to Georgia, there were, was not a homeschool uh, co-op like what we had in Ohio. We really enjoy selecting the kids a uh, core curriculum based on what works best for them. So math, language, arts, and um, science, history, all those things. I like picking um, what works out for our family and our kids. And so a lot of the co-ops here um, were programs where you kind of went for those core classes, you know, part-time and you did that and then you did like homework assignments at home. That just really isn't the style that we enjoy. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just not what we enjoy. I like the family units. I like the fact that we can adapt the curriculum to um, the needs of the kids. And so when we moved here and I couldn't find anything like that, I decided to start my own homeschool group. And that has been one of the best decisions I have made, I feel like since homeschooling, to have a community of other homeschooling parents, um, to offer encouragement and friends and for my kids, friends for me and classes. It's just been a really positive experience. And so if you're experiencing this burnout and you need encouragement, look for a community of homeschooling families. You know, most likely you're not the only one going through what you're going through. I know a lot of times as a homeschooling parent, you can, especially if you're a stay at home parent, it can be isolating. It can make you feel like you know, I'm the only one going through this. I had to watch myself because I'll go on Instagram and Facebook and, and uh, YouTube and I'll see all of these homeschooling parents that look like they're rocking it and their um, homeschool rooms are picture perfect and their schedules are always, you know, on target. It can be discouraging, but you can't forget that social media isn't real life. You know, sometimes we forget that we think, Oh, you know, Susie, she always has her makeup on and her hair done and a beautiful outfit on and her kids have their hair done and beautiful outfits on, and, you know, her eighth grader just started college and, you know, we just feel like, you know, everybody's succeeding except for us. Um, or maybe that's just me. That's how I feel sometimes. There are a whole bunch of parents that are in the exact same position that you are. They're burnt out. They're tired. Their kids don't want to do the lessons. The curriculum's not working. Um, the house is a mess. And their schoolroom is unorganized, even though they spent the whole weekend organizing it. So it, it's helpful to find that community. And if you can't find that community in person, there are a lot of support groups online that can be wonderful to connect with other homeschooling families and get the support that you need. So friends, I sincerely hope that this video has encouraged you. I really do. I do not get paid for posting videos. I mean, it would be nice. But I, I post on here because even if this video reaches one person and gives you a little bit of encouragement, I feel like it is completely worth it. So be encouraged, take care of yourself, keep plugging along if you're passionate about this, if this is what you truly want to do. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the road of life.